And, and, and the McKinsey's are at the, at the centre of this, and they appear to have made up a load of these figures completely on the back of a fag packet in a bar after a serious number of drinks. By the of it. You know, 60% of A and E cases uh, not needing any hospital treatment. Well, that's not what the figures show from serious uh, serious investigations up and down the country. 60% is, is is not a, a serious figure, but they're working on that. That's the plans they're working on. So we've got these type of changes, and we've got other county changes coming, because of course a lot of those are tinkering around with things that don't cost that much money. What they're looking at also is trying to squeeze vast increases in productivity, in other words, work at unpaid work effort, out of frontline hospital staff. So they're talking in East North East London, where we've got the most detailed figures, they're talking about squeezing nursing sector productivity, payroll productivity, up by 37%. 37%. Doctors, 43%. Overall, 35% over the whole of the NHS in North East London. Now that is absolutely cosmic. That's over four or five years, but it's still an absolutely massive amount to squeeze out in so-called productivity. But of course, a lot of these staff are working flat out anyway. We've got beds which are 90 to 100% full in London, and, and these staff are already working uh, all the hours that they can physically do. So the idea you're going to squeeze more effort on that level out, and of course, not in order to then free up more of their time so they can deliver better quality care for patients, but in order that you can sack the spare ones and save the money, because otherwise it doesn't save any money making work harder. It only, it, only, uh, it only annoys the, uh, it annoys the staff. So we've got that. So the, all of this comes under the formula, of course, of delivering care closer to home, which basically means don't trouble us, do it yourself. You know, don't, don't, don't come knock, knocking, asking for care in a hospital because a refusal often offends. You know, uh, that's the kind of uh, and, and care closer to home. Polyclinics are often closer to home. Well, actually, they're often further away from people as well. If you've got a local GP service down the road and you move it to a polyclinic three or four miles away, it's not closer to home at all. And it's not better. And the chances are you're going to be sat in an enormous long queue in a polyclinic, just as you would do in the dark old days of 1948 when the NHS was first formed and there were desperate shortages and, uh, and, and inadequate facilities and so forth. Uh, nobody out in the public that I'm aware of is asking for these changes. These are being forced through in the hopes that they're going to generate savings. So these are very big issues, and I can imagine it, it, it won't be long if they're not already forming similar policies in Birmingham PCTs. I think they soon will be, and you're going to be seeing the results working through. Uh, and you, you know, there's going to be a need to get out there and to challenge some of these things before serious damage is done to our services. There are already campaigns springing up. Oh, I do mean to mention it, because it would be entirely wrong to come to Birmingham, of course, and not mention the other big issue that's also at the centre of all this, because a huge uh, lump of NHS money each year is being squeezed out in the private finance initiatives. And of course, we had Gordon Brown in a you know, very expensive backdrop for his, uh, for his press uh, launch of the manifesto earlier this week in your, in your local PFI hospital. Uh, it looks like that, over, over, the, over the lifetime of that contract, is going to cost something like five times the headline price of 500 million pounds. I can tell you by national comparisons that's a bit relative bargain, okay? Because actually uh, the NHS as a whole is committed to £11 billion pounds worth of PFI hospitals, which, most of which are now functioning, some of which are still being built. £11 billion pounds worth of PFI hospitals, uh, and, and they're going to cost the NHS £62 billion pounds over the lifetime of these contracts. Nearly six times the actual headline price. And some of them, some of them actually are six times or more at the actual headline price by the time you actually work them out. Some of the early schemes in particular are very, very expensive. Now, uh, you know, they, somebody somewhere thought this was a good idea, but we, also, we, we actually already own the banks that were paying for these PFIs. So why are we going to be doing this? Okay? The government has a choice. The government has a choice. They don't have to go this way. right? They can be looking first off Obviously, the points have been made. You can stop the war, scrap tribe, etc. You can generate a lot of money that way. You can do what the PCS, the Civil Service Union, have been saying, and instead of sacking tax workers who actually collect an average of £600,000 per worker after their pay, you can, instead of sacking them, you can start collecting some of the tax that needs collecting and that remains uncollected, of which the PCS estimates there's 120 billion out there waiting to be collected uh, and, and a useful job to be done uh, for people who, who otherwise might be out of work. 
You can actually uh, look, look at maybe raising some taxes on business. You can look at nationalising the banks, uh, using the nationalised banks to buy out the PFI schemes and, and, and avoid those payments, which are headed towards £2 billion a year. You know? And also buy out the, 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 the previous schemes, even the ones that the, the nationalised banks don't already own, uh, we could buy them out as well, with interest rates of 0.5%. It seems crazy not to use cheap uh, loans to actually buy out these very expensive schemes uh, and, and use the, the, the nationalised banks to do it. And we could also, of course, look at chucking out the entire apparatus of private sector involvement right throughout the NHS. We've got private treatment centres, which are a waste of money, but charging over the odds. They should be closed down and brought, again, brought back in, again, nationalised or brought back in uh, to the state system, if, if required. Okay? The, all these apparatus of extra managers to manage the market system the government set up, all of those should be either found useful jobs or booted back out to the uh, private sector where they came from. All these private sector management consultants who are costing us half a billion pounds a year should be given their marching orders and certainly go something useful. Maybe the McKinsey should go and try and sort out the mess they left in the United States on healthcare and actually spend a bit of time trying to work that one out and instead of coming over here trying to impose, impose those kind of crazy methods on us. And, 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 and you know, we need, we need to make some economies possibly on healthcare. Those are some rather useful economies. We could save several billion pounds a year simply by making those economies. And if all push comes to shove, and you still need to look at actually reducing the NHS or doing something else, let's do what they did for the bankers. They just printed 200 billion pounds last year, 200 billion pounds in what they call quantitative easing. If you can create £200 billion, which I'm sure none of you have yet received, right, because it's supposed to be re kick in the economy, we should all have had a check by now, right? Billion, if they do that £200 billion to the bankers, let's do £20 billion and stop the NHS having to make these ridiculous. There are choices, there is political choices, and uh, of course we're entering that period. I didn't come to give you a party political speech, and I've succeeded, because I've run out of time. I'm going to stop now. Thanks very much.